Quick question, why do you require a catalyst for hydrogenation? You know, when you're adding hydrogen across an alkene or a double bond, why do you need this metal here to act as a catalyst? Well, long story short, the catalyst is there to reduce the amount of energy required for the reaction to happen. This is the potential energy diagram for hydrogenation without a catalyst. You got your little reactants here. That means you have an alkene and you have your H2. And then when you're breaking open the double bond and you're breaking open the hydrogens, that requires a lot of energy. You've got to ramp up the amount of energy you have in your system all the way up here to break those bonds. Granted, once the two things react with each other, you slide back down, you get some energy out, and you end up with stable products. In this case, it's actually just an alkane. Long story short, they're more stable. But the problem is you gotta get over this hump. You gotta be able to break those bonds, and that takes so much energy. But because of this thing called a catalyst, we're actually able to need less energy if that made any sense. Here's what I'm saying. You start in the same place. You start with your reactants. But then the alkene binds to the, the, uh, the catalyst. That requires, I don't know, that much energy. That kind of happens. That's step one. Then the H kind of attaches itself to the catalyst. That requires some energy too. It settles down. Then the reaction actually happens. That requires some energy too and then you've made your products. So rather than needing all this energy, oh man, that's a lot. You really only need this much energy. The catalyst binds the alkene and hydrogen to its surface and gets the reaction to happen in three smaller steps so that you reduce the activation energy down from whatever large number this was into this tiny little number here. It's less and that's what counts. That's what makes it a catalyst. Best of luck.